so welcome all to this uh, introduction to glycoinformatics, which will be given today by Frédéric Lisacek and Catherine Hayes. And I'm going to start. This is, um, so what is new from... Uh, Okay, so this should disappear. Okay. Uh, from the, the last video, especially regarding expose. So presumably, maybe I'm assuming too much, but uh, since you are uh, familiar with SIB and uh, enrolled for training on the, uh, for SIB, of course, you must have heard about ecstasy not only from us but from other groups because this is the the portal of the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics and we have posted most of our resources uh, available on um, on ecstasy for the past six years and particularly um, in we we managed to create a glycomics um, section where most of the tools that are there, so I mean all the tools that are there have, uh, they are not all functional, I have to apologize because we are uh, with, there's so much to, to update, so some are working better than others, so please send some feedback and if you see that there's one you are interested in that should be fixed uh, in emergency, we'll definitely take your uh, opinion into account. And so um, we have, so this uh, section and also our own portal within the portal, which is called, uh, which used to be called Glycomics at Expacy, but we shortened to Glyco at Expacy, where all of these tools are also um, available, but mo mostly we have tried to develop um, pedagogical interface for people who have no knowledge of um, glycobiology. And this was presented in one of the videos last year. Uh, I will quickly demo it after this presentation anyway, but the idea is that you have a menu on the, on the left where you can actually click in a box, I mean, tick a box, and this will automatically zoom in the bubble because we have, uh, as you can see here, everything is um, represented as a bubble. Every tool is a green bubble, every database is a yellow bubble, and every portal is a uh, red bubble. And so we try to contextualize all of these resources with a very short summary on what is in uh, the content of, of the resource. And then you can click on a bubble and you zoom again, and then you have, for instance, for this particular glycosite theme, you have three tools uh, that more or less either uh, predict or uh, display information on uh, glycosylation sites on proteins. Then this is one tab and from the novelty of the, the new feature compared to last year's that we have uh, included a, a dependency wheel because not only are we trying to help you with categorizing the themes behind each database, each tool, what are they meant to do, what's the input, what's the output when you have a tool, etc. But they are all individually um, explained. So we thought that it might be interesting to have a dependency wheel where you would see which tool depends on which database and et cetera, et cetera, or which portal hosts which database. So we keep the same color code with red for portal, green for tool and yellow for database. And if you mouse over a particular resource here, Glytucan, I remind you that Glytucan is the glycan structure repository hosted in Japan in the Glycosmos um, uh, portal, so you have the Glycosmos portal, it's actually used in Glygen, which is another portal, it's actually cross-referencing two other glycan structure databases, which are Unicarb DB and CSDB, which is um, a database of um, bacterial and fungal um, and plants, carbohydrates, so with this um, 
type of specificity. Then you can see that uh, there's another uh, database called Glygen, which is uh, the main database of the Glygen portal, and the Glyconnect also cross-reference to Glytucan. So all the cross-references uh, between databases are in um, uh, yellow. And then green, you can see that you have a number of tools that actually rely on the Glytucan database to be uh, actually functional. So this is just an example. I'll demo it uh, again after the presentation, but that's somehow helping to see uh, distinctive features of each database and tool in this sea of databases and tools now. So I always start talking about the resources from what the glycobiology says, um, point of view, because we are relying on knowledge that comes from many, uh, I mean, it's really an interdisciplinary approach uh, to understand what glycans are doing at the surface of cells. And um, here I only talk about proteins, but I could talk about glycolipids, uh, this uh, is another uh, type of problem. So at the moment, I'm just restricting to proteins. But if I speak about proteins, I, I, I call to proteomics and protein science. If I talk about glycans, there's a lot of carbohydrate chemistry, structural biology that is behind biochemistry. And so all of that is sort of behind this picture that cannot be cut into pieces like it is usually like you look at glycoproteins with the sites from a protein science point of view, but you don't care about the glycans. Same thing, you look at the glycans, but you don't really look at the protein that carries them. And then you have the glycan binding protein, the lectins that are recognizing the glycans so that because of all the experimental work that is behind, which requires very different skills, often the problem is broken into pieces and we really mean to keep them um, together because otherwise functionally that makes no sense. So I picture here the N-glycans, the O-glycans and the glycosaminoglycans that are sticking out at the surface of cells and that, that are recognized by carbohydrate binding proteins. Now, going back, whoops, sorry. I'm going back, I want to go for, excuse me, I'm going to make you seasick. I want to give you an update on Glyconnect. And uh, for the time being, Glyconnect that uh, I, we, we co-develop, I mean, uh, Julien Mayeto is the main developer, Ka Catherine Hayes, who you will hear, is also doing some development and some curation. And we are mainly, so you can see here, that was um, last year's uh, figures or beginning of this year's figure with uh, uh, um, 4,720 structures and uh, 1,157 compositions. So these are the new numbers. We keep on growing the numbers, having more uh, glycosylation events to, um, uh, to uh, display uh, in the content of the database. And we still have the dedicated data sets. We update much less the COVID-19 uh, but we have uh, like in the next release, there will be a new, uh, a new data set of COVID-19. HMO is not moving that much. O-monosaccharides like o gluknac is going to grow because we are uh, going to integrate uh, more data from a, a partner database. And human immunoglobulin, Sophia, is also growing and um, we, are, we have been asked to annotate a lot of therapeutic antibodies and their specific glycosylation is reported in a number of papers. So Catherine is really actively working on that. And soon, so the idea is that within, so hopefully next year, if uh, there's a SIP training on glycoinformatics, we should be able to report 
um, quantitative data so that we have profiles of glycosylation associated with um, immunoglobulin. So that is really the, the point in updating what we're doing. One of the issues that we have accumulating data, this is a page for a composition. So you can see here glycans that are um, all matching the composition. They all have six hexose, six hexnac, one fucose and two silic acid. But you can see this is a very well-defined structure. All the linkages are actually shown, but this is far less distinctive. And you can see here, this is the, of course, the representation of this composition only with the, um, the shapes of the SNFG representation. So we are accumulating a lot of ambiguous data. And it's because glycoproteomics and the, the, the most high throughput methods that are used in glycoproteomics and glycomics, um, they, they do not allow a high level of uh, precision in terms of uh, generating the structure. So this is what we end up with. And we still need to be able to compare those structures together to find some motifs in those structures and if you think that, for instance, you have this motif uh, that corresponds to usually a, a glycan epitope, you can find it in this structure, well-defined. You can find it in this structure, well-defined. But you can also find it in this structure, not well-defined. But potentially, the composition is there. So you would like to be able to have a tool that not only matches substructures in a very precise way, but also in a very loose way, so that it matches the current data that we collect in glycoproteomics and glycomics. And likewise, you would like to be able to have a very loose definition of a motif of a glycan, glycan binding pattern, for instance, which is ambiguous, and you would like to find the structures that match that. So for that purpose, we relied on the semantic web technology. So build an ontology, uh, which is described on that. I mean, uh, some um, uh, Sparkle queries that you can do with RDF are, uh, can be tested there. This will be the, the content of the second hour of this course that Catherine is going to explain to you this very busy slide, which is probably very quick for you, but she's going to, you'll see, it will be crystal clear at five o'clock today. But if I just may tell you what it's about is that we have the means with this ontology and with the semantic web technologies and the Sparkle, um, a query language, we have the possibility of asking a question, can you find me any n-linked that is uh, categorized as complex, that has no undetermined region, that is biantenary, and that contains a terminal salic acid. So this is like magic, it works. You can ask this sort of questions and Catherine is going to explain how that works with the new tools that we have um, put together over the past year. This was for Glyconnect. And because, as I said, I never distinguish the glycan binding, the, uh, the glycan bearing protein from the glycan binding protein, I have to talk about unilectin. So we have updates on unilectin as well. Uh, we have developed a new module which is called Treflec for and um, predicting the uh, beta trifle uh, lectin. And there's a really, so um, yes, of course, Francois did the first version of um, Unilectin and Jala took over um, last year. And there's a nice story attached to the Treflec module that we put together because, and this is a paper under revision at the moment, uh, which will hopefully be um, resubmitted very shortly. 
And the story is that we looked at the, uh, the different um, classes of Treflex. So we have a distribution, we can see um, how these uh, different beta trefoil are spread between animal plants and uh, um, or bacteria versus eukaryotes, etc. And so out of this prediction, um, Anna Berti, with whom I, I co-lead development of Unilectin, so she's in Grenoble and she's a lectin specialist, um, she found one prediction that was very interesting because it was in a, a primitive protozoan, so, um, and uh, it, it is used often as a model for animal evolution. And it had a, a, another domain, so it had the lectin domain we are looking for, repeated three times, and another uh, domain, an aerolysine domain. And so she decided, because she's an X-ray crystallographer uh, or has a team that does X-ray uh, crystallography, so they actually did the X-ray crystallography of the lectin domain. They found that we predicted the right site with Treflec and that they, they could identify the, um, the pocket where the, the glycans uh, are fitting. And then they actually uh, looked at this model with the aerolysine uh, domain and made a beautiful carousel um, domain, uh, I mean, a protein model of the lectin domains being the uh, the horses of the carousel turning around and with the air uh, so it's a pore forming um uh, protein so we 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 still have to uh bi binding very specifically uh this gangliocyte uh here and uh, this alpha galnac in this way and it's just that we could prove that a prediction that we made was actually um uh, a real protein. It has some uh, interesting properties as a pore forming protein. Another aspect of lectum explore we've looked into. So we have updated the prediction of lectin. So this was last year's figures. We were almost a million candidate lectin. Now we are over a million and uh, one million and two hundred thousand candidate lectin, but with a score you go down to only uh, 750 or just about. And if you are really restrictive in the scoring system, you have 150,000 uh, to, to check. And the number of species, of course, is also growing. And we have, as new genomes are coming in, we have found more. So if you're interested in uh, exploring lectins, you are quite welcome to check the update. The other application we have managed to, um, to do is to combine our uh, lectin prediction with um, glycan binding prediction in this uh, software. So in, uh, the, this is the work of the team of Daniel Bojar, who is in um, Gothenburg University in Sweden. And uh, so we have, with this prediction, we're trying to refine the classification that we have in uh, unilectin, which is based on folds. And glycan binding, of course, is related to folds, and, but we can do some fine tuning of classification with this prediction. So hopefully by next year, we'll have more prediction um, included in, uh, in unilectin. And so the, the highlight of Unilectin for this year will be the release of human lectome. So this is a new module on the human lectome, that is all the lectins in the human genome. And I will demo that as well. We had to actually merge a number of sources, including Swiss prot, but including um, different uh, 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 reviews that were published in the literature or online. So in the end, it looks like we can stick to that number of 271 lectins in Homo sapiens, but uh, we have some curated lectins and some putative lectins. 
And uh, again, the idea of having everything in the same spot is that we can see everything on well-known lectin, like galactin one, see the specificity all in one go. We have, and we have in preparation more uh, of that, but we have a, 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 a cross-references to expression databases so that we can see where these lectins are actually expressed. And we have also included all the alpha fold um, prediction. And we have also made some models ourselves um, to, to have in, in cases where there's no three-dimensional structure to, to support uh, the annotation of human lectins. So I'll demo that uh, shortly after. And finally, regarding tools, this was a real thorn in my foot because since uh, last year, I kept on announcing that we would have a substructure search updated on Exposy. And this has happened at last with Glystream, what um, Catherine will talk to you about, and she'll probably mention the substructure search. So this is online now. Unfortunately, um, still a bit raw in the sense that if you don't have a glycoCT code for your glycan structure, then you will not be able to use it. So we will definitely integrate a graphic interface where you can draw your glycan and ask for the substructure. So this is um, not fully operational as it used to be, but really getting close to it. So stay tuned. And the last uh, uh, tool I want to mention and uh, the update and the interesting feature possibly for you is a glycom glyco uh, glyconnect compositor, sorry, uh, which is um, really related to glyconnect. And I just remind you that instead of taking the, what the glycoproteomics output is giving us, that is a list of composition associated with the site, we are trying to connect those um, composition just by the addition of one monosaccharide at a time. So here, fucose, so that each, you can see that in fact, those composition are related to one another just by adding one composition so that we can have a glycome for a site, we can have a glycome for a protein, and we can have a glycome for a tissue. So the first new feature I'd like to advertise is that when you actually query, for instance, source, which is the tissue, let's say you want to do a glycoproteomics experiment and you want to build a database of, a data set of composition that are relevant to uh, urine sample analysis. So here we, usually use uh, Glyconnect to do that. So we have 84 composition. And the new feature is that now I have been bashing um, and really preaching everywhere in my talks, in my courses, uh, that having a accession number for each of the entities that you're dealing with, because for instance, it would not occur to any of you if you were studying protein, not to think of providing a uniprot accession number or a refsec accession number to characterize a protein. We have to have this uh, inbuilt reflex to have an accession number for a composition or for a glycan structure, whatever it is. The problem is very often it's disconnected. And so it requires an effort from the user's point of view to go to Glytocan and extract a uh, an accession number. So we're trying to simplify your life. And now you can export your selection of, uh, of composition with the associated Glytocan numbers for these, so sometimes we don't have the cross-reference, but it's uh, for such a simple one, maybe uh, there's just a bug and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have an update, but definitely we expect glycoproteomics people to report each and every composition with a glycocan ID so that we know what we are talking about. 
So I'll keep on preaching and you will have less and less excuses because we'll make more and more tools where it's easy to get. That doesn't mean, so this is the urine glycome, and that doesn't mean that you cannot you used to just a simple list of composition if you don't want to have the glycocan ideas. This is not compulsory. So if you go up in the window, you'll have the glycocan ideas. If you go down, you'll have it without. So that's simple. Now, the great um, advantage of looking at the relationship between uh, composition is that you have profiles and you would like to be able to compare those profiles. So let's take a um, protein, glycoprotein. This is the profile of that protein. It has 16 composition. They are related in that way. And what I call the profile is here, the distribution of properties. So we, we have a majority of salylated and uh, a little less of fucosylated. We have no neutral and we have no oligomanos in that particular profile. So the question we've been asking ourselves, can we pull out proteins with a similar profile in glycanic? So are they there or not? Can we do that? And what, so we've been struggling for, for a while, uh, designing, I mean, defining the measure of similarity which uh, I'm not going to describe at the moment because it's still experimental, but we're getting there. So for instance, this particular protein, this particular uh, peptidase has a similar profile with three other, uh, two other proteins that you can see here. So um, another um, so phosphatase here and here a receptor. And you can see that really the profile cannot be any closer. And uh, you can see also that the composition may not be exactly the same. So uh, the first one, well, there was uh, two extra in this one, but there's more than two extra that remains in, uh, remain in blue. But you can see that the intersection between, between A and C, for instance, is very limited uh, to zero. And uh, to B, C is only one. So it makes more sense probably that uh, two enzymes would have more common um, glycans than a receptor, possibly. This is from the top of my head. I have no idea. I haven't checked those proteins. Really, this is the only examples and I wanted to um, illustrate that. And I'm going to show you some more examples uh, now. So this, is going to start with proteins, but we are also looking at comparing the, the glycomes of tissues, or, of cell lines, and of diseases with this new measure that, and hopefully trying to be very strict so that we have very, uh, very strict similarities so that we don't end up comparing uh, loads of profiles with loads of profiles. So, for my presentation and what uh, I would like to, uh, to mention compared to what we explained last year. So what glycoinformatics says is that we do have a number of resources, uh, databases in particular, to, uh, that are specialized in proteins, in glycoproteins, in glycosaminoglycans, in lectins, in glycan structures, and so we're really relying on these. We have tools that uh, we're really trying to uh, improve more and more to exploit and visualize that uh, knowledge that is in the databases. And we keep on building our complicated picture of glycoinformatics and glycobiology with my group, whom I thank very much with, so Francois has gone, but he's been so uh, instrumental and Jala has not provided any picture. So, um, but uh, on the unilectin uni front, uh, our team of uh, like our advisory uh, and uh, uh, board of, of uh, collaborators in glycobiology, um, the ecstasy people who have helped us very much for uh, hosting ecstasy, glycoad ecstasy as it is now. 
And also I remind you that we have tried to put this Glyspace Alliance together with Japan and the US, uh, uh, so Glycosmos in Japan and Glygen in the US, and that we keep on trying um, holding this glycoinformatics together. So funding, and I thank you for your attention. And I'll take the uh, next um, few minutes to, uh, so to, to actually show you some examples. Go back here to show you um, indeed how you can actually directly uh, zoom in a bubble and have all the box ticks ticked here. And, uh, and here you can see on structure, you have Glytucan, you have CSDB that are there. Glytucan is the univer universal uh, repository, CSDB, the bacterial, archaeal, uh, plant, fungal carbohydrates. So you can zoom out clicking here. Uh, we have, oh yes, I have the, the white. Uh, now I've, uh, we've added those ones because we have Glycop uh, Glycopedia, which is a very useful resource uh, to uh, learn about um, glycobiology and um, carbohydrate chemistry in general and uh, essentials of glycobiology. So the, um, there's a new edition that was released uh, actually uh, this year. You, you can, see, when I, I change screen, everybody can see? Monique, you can see? Yes. Okay. Uh, so new essential of glycobiology is here. New cover, guess what? The, we advertising uh, how glycobiology and, and the knowledge of uh, glycoscience is important uh, in, uh, in virology in particular. So very recently um, released, so 2022 and uh, updated edition. Um, so if I move to here, we I mentioned as well, I can, sorry. Uh, so we have this particular GAGDB here, uh, for instance, which is a glucosaminoglycan database uh, related to matrix DB, to the protein, uh, so, so the PDB. Uh, and uh, so where you can see actually uh, the, the binding of uh, glucosaminoglycans with some proteins and Glyco3D. We can look at a tool like, uh, so GLIAS3, that was the substructure search, which is uh, used, uh, integrated in uh, Unilectin, in Glycostore, in SugarBind, and in Glyconnect. Uh, compositor here, uh, uh, related to the, all these software that are uh, glyc glycopolyomics data analysis software, so we are trying, this is wishful thinking. It's actually not act, uh, related. I mean, it's not cross-referencing each other. It's just that the topic is related, that you can see all of your glycoproteomics uh, data uh, with a Glyconnect compositor. And uh, you have here GLAD, which is um, uh, um, glycan array analysis software which is related to the CFG portal, to uh, a database of, um, of uh, glycan binding uh, proteins, uh, reagent, the R is for reagent, which is at NIH and uh, Sugar Sketcher, which is the, the tool that is used there. So you can actually browse all of these and see for yourself. So Uniprot, of course, cross-referencing not necessarily, again, Uniprot does not cross-reference to all these um, analysis tools for glycoproteomics, but all these tools for glycoproteomics actually rely on Uniprot to identify glycopeptides. So this is why the relationship is there. Now, I wanted to show you some more um, complicated profiles. So you can see here, for instance, I have 
three proteins, lactotransferrin, prosapazine, uh, and fibronectin, all the end linked with the, the sites. And you can see I have a, a quite a tight uh, network because each time we have close to 100 composition, but you can see the, um, so you can uh, see the fucosylated structures and uh, the, the ratio between neutral oligomanos, fucosylated and silylated uh, is really very close in those three proteins. You can see the 51, so 50% 50 of these structures are actually common to these three proteins. They have their own specificity. They have a lot in common pairwise as well. And so this is one way of uh, exploring again. I have another smaller example where you see here a, a big bias towards neutral and uh, less with oligomanos, absolutely no silylated. This is in the mouse, um, no uh, silylated structure. So um, this is again, a possibility of investigating the data and the common profile. Uh, I'm sorry if I make you, um, if this uh, sounds interesting and you can't use it now, but we'll need another um, few months before it's online, but it's really very close to, um, to being completed. Uh, to go back on uh, unilectin here. So this is the human lectome. This is how you can actually browse it. So it's really close to, to ready. So this is the, actually, I wanted to show you first how it looks like uh, curated. So this was shown and I wanted to actually um, particularly focus on this one, which you can see here. So we have 23 lectins of this uh, beta sandwich uh, immunoglobulin-like uh, and these are usually uh, adhesion molecules. And uh, for most of them, they are uh, salic acid binding Ig-like uh, lectins, so called also Siglex. And you can see here that in, this, in the categories of Siglex, we have Siglex 3 that has a unilectin entry. So we have seven um, PDB structures of Siglex 3. So this is CD33, and you can see the specificity changing um, uh, uh, salic acid uh, linkages here. So some uh, larger. So this is what Unilectin 3D would tell you. However, uh, in many cases, we don't have. So Siglex 14, 11, uh, 10, there's no, um, uh, there's no PDB. So we have to go to Lectome Explore to actually see the entry. Here, uh, if you remember, you can actually check whether the binding sites are conserved. And this is with a, with a 0.5 score, it means that most of them are conserved, but not quite. Anyway, this is the uh, lectome explore entry and the human lectome entry. Uh, I think I looked at this one, looks like this. So there's more information uh, on the protein. You have the sequence, as I said, you have the alpha fold in that case because we have no nothing to offer. So you can see that you the lectin domains are pretty well uh, so it's a blue score, so it's, um, it's a relatively uh, reliable prediction, but you have some kind of orange, very low prediction in the uh, loose ends of the SIGLEC, which is understandable. Uh, we have a link to Swiss model, and we are uh, currently gathering all the modeler uh, prediction uh, for for those um, unknown human lectin folds, and here we we are um, expecting also to have um, the human protein atlas 
cross-referenced and uh, we have here the uh, proteomics DB uh, to see the expression and then there will be more RNA and DNA. Uh, so it's a little bit more complete than our usual records, which are really uh, focused usually on um, uh, here, if we go to oh, uh, a, a unilectin, which is here. If you look at a record, it's really focusing usually on the, on the binding uh, with a closer look. Uh, light mole. We we also moving from uh, light mole to mole star. Uh, so this is, and we have this uh, possibility of looking really at the very close interaction here. So this is for unilectin 3D. Um, last thing that I wanted to show you is uh, a page on Lectome Explore, which is for people who are using commercial lectins. Um, and we have gathered this table where you have uh, the specificity, so it's um, ranked by specificity in columns and by fold in, in rows. And each time, so you have uh, it's um, uh, the, the specificity here, you have the green uh, button for predicted uh, lectin, so that means that there is no unilectin 3D entry. For this one, for instance, there's a uh, unilectin 3D entry, so we open the, the same sort of entry as we have before. Whereas uh, with a green one, uh, you have uh, a lectome explore entry. Whoops, demo effect. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, let me try another one if, to see if I identify a, a problem. So here, there's no unilectin link at all. And this one, uh, this, this is not advertised yet. Again, it's in preparation and we have obviously a problem so it's working with all the blue buttons, but the green buttons are uh, obviously in need of something. So I have to look into this. Um, but anyway, if I go back to uh, uh, a blue button, you have a link to two databases, the, uh, uh, the data repository of, um, of glycan array on the CFG uh, site, and a very new database, which is called Carbogrove, and uh, Carbo Grove is actually um, uh, summarizing with, with different uh, box plots and, and so on, the, uh, the specificity of some lectins. So we have a direct access with, uh, with this. So this again is in the making, almost ready, but not quite. Uh, we've used the Vector Laboratories uh, Guide and a review that was published this year. So as to help people who are using lectins and biolectins to be sure they have the right specificity for it. And the last thing I wanted to tell you is that we also um, have a, a, a new so I, I should ha hide the URL, please don't look at it. Um, where we'll, we'll have some, um, especially education and training uh, that will be summarized here uh, on, on Glygen, on Glycosmos, on what we do. So it's, it's really about what every, everybody does. So you have here a, a map and maybe we'll add some partners in the future it's really not uh, restricted to, to the uh, um, founders of this alliance. And uh, we will, ho we hope, because the current website is not very functional uh, and it was just to, to advertise and put our foot in the door. So now it's the next generation and we'll have also some news. So potentially you can stay tuned and it will be at the glyspace.org as it is at the moment. Uh, and um, 
hopefully this will work uh, soon as well. That's it.